It's time to look at the life cycle that we have with our Blazor component. The first life cycle that is being called is on initialized, and after that we have the asynchronous version of that, which is on initialized async. In our components, we have already seen this in action. It is executed when the component is completely loaded, and this is the perfect place to load data from services if we are using some APIs or endpoints, because each control in the UI is loaded after this method. So basically, this is the method that executed when component is ready and when it has received the values from parent in the render tree. So whenever you have to call any service to initialize data or load some data on initialized will be the life cycle that you should be looking at. Now when it comes to life cycle, if you just go through theory, it won't make sense. So let's switch back to the application and actually see that with examples. Inside our pages folder, let me create a new Razor component. I will call this life cycle. And then I just noticed inside the nav menu here, we still have fetch data. We do not want this. We removed the home and counter, but let's also remove fetch data that is not needed because it is the default component and not something that we built. Let me close all the tabs other than the new component that we added. So we added a parent component for lifecycle inside the learn blazer component. Let's also add a child component and we will name it lifecycle child.razor. Let's add that. Then the main component, which is lifecycle component, will be a routable component. So we can add the page directive there. And let me also open up the nav menu. Let's add a new link here. So we will copy and paste the blazer.js. Inside learn blazer, we will have lifecycle. Let's copy this href, go to our page and paste it right there. So with that, we have a link to route to this component. Now to get started quickly with this component, inside the parent component, we will copy everything that we have inside the default component, which is counter.razor. So let me copy everything other than the header or the page route. We will close that and I will paste it right here. Let's run the application and see how this looks so far. So if we go on lifecycle, we have our counter here and that is working as expected. I will be calling our lifecycle methods inside both the components. So the child component as well as the parent component. So when the lifecycle gets triggered, I want to display which lifecycle was called in which order. In order to do that, we can have list of string and we can log every time lifecycle is called. So inside the lifecycle component after the current count, let me add a list of string I will call that as event type to log all of the events that are triggered. And then on the top, after the click me button, we will display all of the string inside this event type. So we will add a for each loop variable item in event type. We just want to display the item and add a horizontal line. The first life cycle that we want to work on is on initialized and on initialized async. We have already seen how to add those in the previous videos that will be protected, override, and then we see all of the methods. And when I try to enter, the intelligence is not working. Let me stop the application here and let me try that one more time. We have the on initialized. It does not seem to work. Let me actually restart the application. With .NET 6, I have faced many issues with IntelliSense with Blazor application. I'm hoping they will be fixed in future. So let's give that one more try. We have the on initialized and perfect. It works this time. Next life cycle that we want to override is the on initialized async. With async methods, the return type will be task. When on initialized is called, we can add event type dot add and we will add a string log that on initialized is called. Based on that, we will display that on the UI. 
Let me copy this and we will add some logging inside the on initialized async and let me add that. So on initialized async is called. Because this is an async method, we can add task.delay there and let's delay that by one second. We will also have to add the async keyword there and the errors should go away. Perfect. So we have added two logs inside the lifecycle component. Let's run the application and see the result. Let's click the lifecycle and perfect. You can see first on initialized is called and next the on initialized async is called. Let me just go back and, I'll, and I will add an HR to make things look pretty. Perfect. So that is the life cycle of the parent component. Let's do something similar in the child component. Let me copy everything from lifecycle razor, go to our underscore lifecycle child here, and let me paste it right here. We do not have a routable path, so let's remove that. We will remove everything that we have for counter. So let me do that. We don't need the counter here or the increment count. Now we already know the on initialized is invoked before the on initialized async. So we can remove the async method from the child component and inside the log for on initialized, let me add the child tag. That way we can differentiate that pretty easy. We will have to restart the application to see this in action. Now right now we are not calling the child component so let me do that. After the buttons that we have here let me add a div, give it a class of border and inside there we have the underscore lifecycle child component. Let me save this, let's go back and click on the lifecycle component and perfect we see on the child component we have the on initialized is called inside the parent component we have the on initialized and on initialized async. With that, we have seen the first method in our hierarchy of Blazor lifecycle. Let's continue in the next video. The next lifecycle that we have after initialized and on initialized async is on parameter set and on parameter set async. These are called each time a new or updated parameter is received from parent in the render tree. So let's go back to our example and inside the lifecycle component, let's add these two methods. So we will go back to our lifecycle component. Let's scroll down and in here we will say protected override. We have on parameter set and we will do the same. We have protected override and we have the on parameter set async. We need to do some logging there as well. So let's do that. On parameter set is called let me copy the other one paste it here and on parameter set async is called if we save this I believe we'll have to restart that is correct I also forgot the async keyword here and with that let's run the application one more time then before anything let me switch back to the presentation when a component is first initialized, we have on initialized async. Next one is each time a new or updated parameters are received from the parent in render tree. How do we test that? If we switch back to the code, we have a parent component which is lifecycle and we have a child component which is underscore lifecycle child. In order to test this on parameter to our child component, we can pass a parameter which can be count value is equal to let's pass the current count next we need to capture this in our child component right here we'll add parameter and an integer count value inside child component we will also require the on parameter set so let's override void on parameter set we will add the same logging that we have so let me copy this line paste it here and the method name needs to be updated. When we save it, we will of course have to stop the application. So what actually happens here? Whenever inside the parent component we are changing the counter value, the parameter that is being passed to the child component also changes. 
even though we are not using the count value that we added in the UI of the child component, but still the parameter is actually being changed. So let's start our application again and see what happens. Let's go to lifecycle. You can see for a second we had on initialized and on parameter set for the child component, but inside parent we have the on initialized, initialized async, then on parameter set and on parameter set async. That is the flow. Let's hit the counter that we have here. As soon as we hit the counter, you can see the on parameter set on child is invoked. The number of times you hit the increment counter, it adds on the parameter set. The reason behind that is what we saw in presentation. Each time a new or updated parameters are received from the parent in the render tree, the on parameter set is called again. And we saw exactly that happen when we were passing the counter from parent to child. So with that, we have seen live example of where the on parameter set makes sense. We should use this method when we want to get values of parameters updated from the parent component. And based on those parameters, we want to update some child component and state. So with that, let's continue from the next video. The next method that we have in our lifecycle is on after render and on after render async. These methods are called after each render of the component. The point at which they are called, you can expect that all the elements and the component references are populated. It means that if you have to perform any actions, such as attaching an event listener, that requires the element of the component to be rendered in DOM. Another great use for these lifecycle methods is for JavaScript library initialization which requires some of the elements to be in place to work. Now testing them in our application will be a little tricky, but let's walk through that together. So if we go back to the application, inside the lifecycle component, we have four methods here. Let me remove the delay that we were adding here and let's add the on after render. So we'll say protected override and next we'll press control space if the intellisense doesn't work we will first implement the on after render and then we'll say protected override next we have the on after render async let me add the logging here as well we will add async keyword because of the task and we have the on after render async and on after render. Let me add debugging points in the last three action methods here and run the application. If we go to lifecycle, we hit our debugging point. Let's continue. We are hitting the on after render and then we have the on after render async. Now if we press F10 and examine the event type here, we have on initialized, on parameter set as well as on after render. But when we hit continue here on the UI, we will not see the on after render or the on after render async. Can you think about why this is happening? The reason it is happening is it is already added to the event type. But on after render is called after the rendering is done. So that means the initial screen rendering has already been completed and then we are adding that to the event type. That is why it is not visible on the UI. Now let me show you something interesting here. Let me stop the application and inside the on after render, let me add a condition. You can see inside the parameter, we have the first render. What this basically tells you that if this is the first time it is being rendered, we can use that boolean flag to change some things. So we can use that and we'll say if it is the first render, in that case, I want to set the current count to be 111, else I want to set the current count to be 999. So think about what I am doing right here. A component can be rendered many times. Whenever the value of a parameter changes, the component is re-rendered. But here what we are saying is only during the first render of the component, initialize the current count to 111. 
If the component is rendered again, then the current count should be 999. So let's see what happens this time. What do you think will be the value of the current count when we load the page? So if we go to the page, it hits our breakpoint. Inside the on after render, you will notice the first render is true. That's why the current count is set to 111. But as I've said before, if we press F5 and go to the UI, the count will be 0. The reason behind that is initialization of that 111 happened after the rendering was complete. Now when we hit click me here, it will force the component to re-render. This time you will notice the first render is false and that is correct. So it will go to the else block and the current count is 999. But if we go to our UI, you will not see 999 because this assignment happens after the rendering is done. So if we continue here on the UI, you will see 112. Now you might be wondering that, hey, we assigned that to 111. How come it is 112? Well, the reason behind that is we have the increment count. So that's why it was incremented to 112. So next time, if we hit click me here, the value is already 999 and it will be incremented to 1000. Let's go back and give that a try. Perfect. You can see we hit click me here and the value is now 1000. So with that example, now you can understand the use case for this life cycle. We can use this life cycle to perform additional initialization steps using the content that is already rendered, such as activating third-party JavaScript libraries that operate on the elements which are already present in the DOM. So that gives us a brief. So with that, we have seen the on after render and on after render async. Let's continue in the next video. The next lifecycle methods are should render and state has changed. Should render method returns a boolean value. If that is true, it means we have to refresh the UI. Otherwise, the changes that are made are not sent to the UI. Should render method always does the initial rendering despite of its return value. Before we take a look at the state has changed, let's go back to our program and see should render. So inside the life cycle, we will say protected override and then we have should render. Let's add an event type there. We will call that should render is called. I removed all the debugging points here. Let's run the application. We have an error there. It's not returning a path and we will return true because that will make sure that rendering is done. Let's go back to the code and let me add a debugging point on the should render. Let's go back to the application. Let me also add a debugging point on the on after render async. Let's go back and hit the life cycle. You will notice our debugging point hits the on after render async but it will not hit should render. That's because by default, should render will always be true on the initial render. But next time when we hit click me, the value is changed, so should render will be true. And you can see it is being called. Let's hit continue, and then it will go to the on after render async. So first we have should render, and then comes the on after render async. The last on after render is already added, but since the UI is rendered, it will not be visible. So that is something that we have already seen. Another use case of should render is if you return false there, then the UI will not be rendered. This can be handy under some situations. We won't be using this method that often, but it is good to know that we have that if needed. The last one that we have is state has changed. It is called after all the lifecycle methods have been called. This method notifies the component that its state has changed. It can be invoked manually to trigger a UI re-render and that is a critical point. If at some point the UI is not refreshing and you want to manually render that, you can use this method. This method will look at the value returned from the should render 
to decide if a UI re-render should happen or not. However, this only happens after the component has been rendered for the first time and that makes sense as well. So how can we test the state has changed? That will be a little bit tricky. Let's go back to our application. And on the lifecycle page, let me go to the top here and let me add a using statement for system.threading. This is because I want to introduce a timer to show you the state has changed in action. Let's say we want that timer to run for 5 seconds. So we will have private integer count. We will have the getter and setter. And let's set that to be 5. And let's scroll down to the methods here. I will be adding two new methods. The start count here will start the countdown. Inside the time callback, we are checking if count is greater than zero, we decrement that, and then we invoke the state has changed. Then let me just add a method to invoke the start countdown function. So let's go to the top here. So after the click me button, let me add a br. We will display what is the current count, and then we have the button to start the countdown. So let me save everything here. Because of hot reload, when we save it, the should render is invoked because there is new items in the component and it has to re-render. So that is perfect. Let's go back to the UI. And let me just refresh here. Perfect. Now when we call this timer, there will be more lifecycle methods that are invoked because we are changing the state manually. But let's focus on the timer right now. So let's click that. You can notice the counter is decrementing and then every time it decrement you can see it adds more of the methods or life cycle. It calls the on after render, on after async and should render every time we decrement. Now this would have not worked if we did not call the state has changed. So let me scroll down and comment out the state has changed and run the application to show that. Let's go to life cycle and hit the start countdown. You can see the UI is not rendering. Now you might be wondering that the counter is not working, but let me just add a breakpoint here and run the application once again. So let's go and start countdown. We hit our breakpoint here. You can see the count is 5. If we continue here, once it decrements, the next time you can see the count is 4. If I press F5 to continue, next time the count is 3. We press F5 again, and finally the count is 0. But if we remove the debugging point and continue here, on the UI if you go back, the count is still 5. So it is not rendering the UI again. This is a good use case to understand where you can use the state has changed manually. So with that we have covered the life cycles. So with that we have seen life cycles in Blazor.